and welcome to Motors TV's review of the 2010 World Series by Renault Championships. Four different categories competing across some of the greatest circuits in Europe, with the premier category being the Renault 3.5 single-seaters that's seen drivers like Sebastian Vettel, Robert Kubica and Jaime Algoshwari progress into Formula One. Formula One cars on show, lots of spectacle with legends like John Ragnotti doing their demos and some other fantastic activities for family and friends. And most of the time, it's free to enter, which is why you get such massive crowds across the circuits of Europe. And the action started in the uh, Motorland circuit near Zaragoza in Spain, a new track uh, to 2009 and then into the opening round of 2010. Mixed conditions, as you can see. And this is what the calendar looks like. April in Motorland, then moving across to Spa-Francorchamps, Monaco for just the 3.5 car supporting the Grand Prix. Bruno, Manicure, Hungara Ring, Hockenheim, Silverstone, and finishing at Catalonia. So away from the start, the drivers make a tricky charge down into turn one. All of the races, 45 minutes for race one. And the cars must run to two different setups immediately. You see drama. Somebody running wide, one of the Fortec cars. It could have been John Lancaster, the British driver. He might have had a problem there. As you can see, it is the blue car, the Carlin car of Mikhail Aleshin leading away. And he is leading from the Australian driver, Daniel, Daniel Ricciardo, who is the British Formula 3 champion. As you can see, supported by Red Bull, driving for the Tech 1 team. And in third position, the 12 car of Daniel Zampieri, the 22-year-old Italian driver. As you can see, the problems the drivers have struggling for grip. So Alicia leads Ricciardo, Zampieri, Guerrieri, Coletti and Salacada. Guerrieri and Salacada in the ISR team, the Czech team that's uh, owned and run by Igor Salacada, the father of Philippe. But already early on in the race, just uh, a couple of minutes old. And you can see the fight between Alicia and Ricciardo starts all running identical cars, these three and a half litre V6 cars producing some 480 horsepower, running on identical Michelin tyres, either slick tyres or, of course, on conditions like today, grooved wet weather tyres. Michelin providing the tyres for all of the championships in the World Series by Renault. So alongside the Renault 3.5s, you also have their baby brothers, the Formula Renault two later and they're all new cars for 2010 we'll see action from their championship a little bit later on plus the ever spectacular uh, Megan trophy again using the same engines as these cars you can see the gap now between Elation and Ricciardo virtually the same going down the order Federico Lea, John Lancaster, Julian Liel, Brendan Hartley teammate to Ricciardo see a change of positions there I think that might have been Federico Leo very sideways in the other of the Pons racing cars just about keeping that car under control. No traction control, but it is a paddle shift gearbox. So it is a six speed sequential racing gearbox. Now over a second, the lead that Alicia has got after four minutes or just about two, three laps, I think we've seen already. And a safety car comes in. And it is Alicia needing Zampieri and Ricciardo. charge away with 25 minutes remaining of race one you can see that Zampieri has got himself ahead of Ricciardo there's no doubt, oh, contact in the background big contact I think that was Berton was one of the drivers involved in that yeah that's Nathaniel Berton the number one car in the championship winning team of uh, Draco Racing in the Force India Colours, of course, and won the series in 2009 with Belgian driver Bertrand Baguette, who has progressed into the IndyCar series, racing in America, finding his feet in that particular series. Drivers, as we said, coming out of this championship into Formula One. Jaime Aguaswari, in fact, during 2009. And that is, I think that on the right hand side is Esteban Guerrieri, the Argentinian driver who has been one of the championship favorites before the event driving for the isr team the 25 year old argentinians the carlin motorsport trevor carlin on the right hand side folds his arms and looks slightly concerned as to what's going to happen at the moment though 
and trouble is Mikhail Aleshin, a Russian driver who was racing in the F2 series in 2009. Moved you back into the World Series, of course, has competed in this championship sporadically since uh, 2007. No experience in things like Formula 3, so it was a big, big jump for him into this championship. Very briefly raced in the A1 GP series for Team uh, Russia when that was at the first season in 2005, but he takes the opening race of the season. Victory for Elishin, victory for Carlin. In difficult conditions, the Russian driver gets the job done. And he leads home. Daniel Zampieri, a great performance by the Italian, and Ricciardo in his first race weekend for the Tech One team, with Red Bull backing, of course, and there, Marcus Koch in the centre of the shot, the race engineer for Carlin, very experienced Australian. He's worked at various different levels of the sport. Teammate to Malaysian is uh, the American driver, Jake Rosenweig. He's got experience of uh, racing in Euro Series F3 and also in things like Porsche Carrera Cup. Now, you can see the, the dramas that the drivers have here. Was uh, Greg Mansell, the British driver, driving for the Beach Dean team in association with Comtech? But this is what it looks like after the opening round of the championship. Alicia from Zampieri, from Ricciardo, John Lancaster doing a great job to take fourth from Nelson Panciatici, Hartley, Rosenweig in seventh, Mansell eighth, Daniel Move, and Walter Grubmuller taking tenth. You can see the rest of the drivers throughout the. the uh, order there and a lot of DNFs understandably perhaps in these incredibly difficult conditions so race two in Motorland and much like race one somebody from the back of the grid making a, a rather keen start and you can see as they charge down into turn one it's a reverse grid for the top eight makes it a little bit more complicated than that I think is a leash in spinner or was that rising by couldn't see which of the Carlin cars that was very difficult to say British Caro's leading Pentas, Ricciardo, Leo, Costa and Grubmuller. That is the top six at the start of this race. And Jan Caro's the Czech driver, of course, winning the Le Mans series with Aston Martin in 2009, sharing with Stefan Mucha. And also had a tremendous fourth position at the Le Mans 24 hours in the Lola Aston Martin, the golf-sponsored car. So it's Caro's, Pentas, Ricciardo, Leo, Costa and Grubmuller. That is our top six as they charge down. Another 45-minute race. Slight difference in the cars now for this race because apart from the obvious that the conditions are much better and you can see now full slicks for and a full dry setup for all of the drivers and crews. But also over the race weekend to make it a little bit more uh, varied in terms of possible outcomes as we see a problem there for Guerrieri into the pits. Well, his championship challenge has not started well at all and it looks like he's going to retire. That's a broken wishbone on the bottom of the ISR car. As I said, all of these cars, identical Dallara chassis, carbon fibre with Michelin tyres, 3.5 litre, 480 brake horsepower. Uh, engines that derived as a Nissan power plant. It was originally uh, the uh, Nissan Championship then, of course, uh, Renault and Nissan being associated as a sort of uh, partner brands, as it were, sharing a lot of the technology. But most importantly, for the moment, we've seen a big change at the front. It's Sten Pentas. The Estonian driver who has got himself to the front in the Fortec Motorsport car. 28 years old, one of the more mature drivers, but takes victory after some chats and promise in 2009. Brilliant drive at Barcelona earlier in the year in 2009 to uh, get some great points and get a, champ uh, get a podium there. And also a great result for Jan Karaus, the Czech driver just ahead of Ricciardo. Now Ricciardo is surely going to come away with uh, a great position in the championship after this having taken a second and a third. You see the rest of the grid scrapping to the line. Fifth and sixth, though, is going to be Albert Costa, the 2009 Euro Cup champion. Just heading out the rest of the pack. Brendan Hartley, Daniel Move, and Elishin in ninth position, just ahead of Grubmuller. It was Rosenweid that we saw spinning. And there, Pentas' girlfriend. Understandably, very, very happy for her man. And the boys from Fortec, absolutely delighted. Now, throughout the season, we've got uh, Motors TV. have had a chance to have some special guests at each of the events. And for one of the events, we have Rachel Trapani. This lovely lady was elected Miss France in 2007. And she joined us here at Spa. As you can see, fully safetyed up. 
and we get a chance to hear from Rachel a little bit later and her thoughts of what she makes of a World Series by Renault race weekend. Took a little video camera around with her. Got to meet the drivers. I'm sure they were very pleased to meet her. So we go to the action on circuit and this is round two, race one. And 36 minutes remaining, the battle between Sten Pentis and Brandon Hartley for second place. It is Mikhail Alishin who is leading at this stage. An interesting pole position was for Jake Rosenweig. Perhaps wouldn't have expected to see that. Bit of a mixed conditions and he got the best out of it, as did the Carlin team, getting the best out of him, of course. But uh, Brandon Hartley, the New Zealander, had a massive fight with Oliver Turvey and Jaime Algashwari for the 2008 British Formula 3 Championship. In the end, it went the way of Al Ghashwari, who at 18 became the youngest ever winner of that championship. And interestingly, all three drivers driving for the Carlin team. Well, for Tech 1, it is Hartley trying to go the long way round on Sten Pentas, and just about does it. What a great move by Brendan Hartley. Fantastic performance by him, just edging out the man who won the second race at uh, Aragon, and that's Sten Pentas. Just saw Alessian flash through our shot there. And a good performance so far for Coletti, the Monogas driver in the Comtech team, teammate to Mansell, just ahead of Nebelitsky. Down the order is Caruz, Lancaster, Mansell, Leo, Leo Grubmuller rounding out the top 12. And quite often we see some mixed conditions here in Spa Francochamp. Had been the case over the weekend. Fights throughout the grid just ever present because these cars are so equally matched really comes down to a mixture of team set up getting the best out of the car oh tragedy for Harley from a great position breaking down and out of the race for him very frustrating for Brendan Hartley really important year for him with support from Red Bull as he's had for some time in his career needed to get a good result and Pierre meanwhile for a great performance in Aragon taking a second place in that Opening round continues to charge down on the back of the cars ahead. And you see Ricciardo, teammate to Hartley, having taken two podiums so far this year, comes into this event in a really good position, charging hard. But it was Alessio who took his second win of the year ahead of Sten Pentis Coletti from Monaco taking third, Costa, Lancaster, Nebelitzia, good performance by him, Mansell, Leo, Grubmuller and Jan Carrells round out the top 10, ninth and 10th, both for Roli Vincini's P1 Motorsport and being Spa, as you perhaps would have expected, we get a change in conditions for this magnificent circuit and a big challenge for the reverse grid, remember the top eight drivers reversed so that the eighth place finisher will take pole position and instantly as you can see the boys and girls of the teams absolutely flat out changing wing settings now over the two race weekends the teams must run a low downforce and a high downforce setup in uh, in the two different races Rosenweig there who uh, had a good start to his qualifying managing to take well position for this race Costa Spaniard who had an injury just before the season started missed a lot of testing and uh, was a little bit hampered there. The other thing, of course, is sometimes a change of visor is required. Most of the drivers will choose either a smoked or a dark visor. And for Zampieri, obviously the crew are having to very quickly, it's a very delicate operation, change not only the car, but in this case, change the driver's crash helmet or change the visor on the crash helmet to a clear visor to give him the opportunity. But onto the action on the circuit, we see a moment there for... Esteban Guerrieri and the ISR team looking absolutely on edge, as you could perhaps imagine. He rejoins without too much of a drama. And at the moment in this second race, it is Guerrieri leading Zampieri, Alicia Coletti, Ricciardo and Brendan Hartley after his heartbreak in race one. Usually frustrating for him. is going to be significant for Guerrieri as we said at the start one of the championship favorites Guerrieri Alishin and certainly drivers like 
Daniel Ricciardo, Brendan Hartley. Interestingly, in terms of championship positions, the highest finisher in 2009 that's returned to the series for 2010 is Russian driver Daniel Move, who's driving for the uh, Junior Lotus team. Move is uh, a Russian who's got a lot of potential, a lot of Russian drivers showing potential here, but it was the Argentinian driver, Esteban Guerrieri, winning from Daniel Zampieri, Stefano Coletti, another podium for him. And this is a driver standing, 38 points to Alishin. 10 point lead over Ricciardo Pentas, just one point behind Zampieri Coletti. Also really in there with a shout, Costa Guerrieri after his retirement, causing him a real headache in terms of his point position right the way at the bottom. The Intuetan drivers of Caramasas and Mendes. So with round three of the championship going to Monaco, where a victory was taken in the single race they had, and it was just the 3.5 that raced there. That was Daniel Ricciardo, who took victory. Uh, and a tremendous performance by the young Australian there. We go on to Bruno, and a very hot and sultry Bruno it was, and home circuit for the ISR team, and domination after victory. We saw for Esteban Guerrieri in race two at spa francorchamps Chandy. 25-year-old Argentine, looking very, very strong throughout the weekend. Home knowledge perhaps being of use, some testing maybe beforehand in uh, other cars. He's leading Ricciardo and Hartley in the, with a shout as well. There is Elishin. Remember, the crews must take a tyre stop in the second race. Just two tyres must be changed. Most of the time they elect to change the front tyres. Sometimes it is the rears. Again, in a relatively short race, just over 40 minutes, it means that, that they shouldn't have too many issues with tyre wear, generally speaking. As we've seen Zampieri into the pits. Problems for him. And Alation out as well. Well, this is a massive blow to Michael Alation's championship challenge, the championship leader after spa franco Champ is in the pits and out of the race. Massive drama. He finished second at Monaco behind Ricciardo, so this is going to really hurt his championship. But Guerrieri taking over the lead from his teammate, Salacada. Philippe Salacada had a, a great qualifying. That's what it looked like. Guerrieri wins from Hartley, from Nebelitsky. His best performance so far in Formula Renault. And also from Leal, the Colombian driver, doing a great job to bring the car home in fourth position. And frustration for Salacada. Rosenweig, an even bigger frustration for Alessi. Look at that. Did not finish. So, reverse grid. And with 41 minutes, uh, sorry, 28 minutes remaining see the drivers and crews coming through. Uh, Guerrieri leading from Salacada, Berton, Panciatici, Hartley. In a safety car. Caru's attacking another local driver. Knows this place inside out. His father Antonin and he oh, almost contact there between uh, Battling Hartley at Lancaster, I think. We were watching there. Yeah, the eight car of uh, Ricciardo running very wide, and Charu's Charu's just getting past him. Great job by the young man who's got a lot of experience for his his years. Still only 22 years old. He's also racing in the Auto GP series this year. With his teammate Gleb Muller. He's also a, a Renault F1 reserve driver and demonstrated the Renault F1 car here at Bruneau on his home track. Doing an awful lot for him. So, Carus now attacking Panciatici. This is for eighth position on the final lap. And meanwhile, he's watching. Can he get it done? He pulled off a great move early on, but uh, 
Chichichi, oh, just leaves enough of a gap, gets the job done, but runs wide. And the Leishin, I think, charging through, managing to get, look at this defending gun, you can see a car just to our right there. And that was Costa coming through, number 15 car of Albert Costa, the 19-year-old, doing a great job to muscle his way through. And look at the sense of stress and tension there, living every corner, every lap. And he has been absolutely superb throughout the weekend. As Esteban Guerrieri looks like he's going to take a double victory. It is an outstanding performance considering the way that grid works here. Brings the car through the right-hander onto the start, finish straight to take his third victory of the season and to move himself back very much into contention for the... 2010 championship he wins brings the car home a superb performance by him another strong drive by Brandon Hartley in the Tech One car just heading off John Lancaster so great performance by him so Guerrieri leads Berton across the line a Frenchman in the Draca racing car from Salacada so a 1-3 for ISR Grubmuller, Ricciardo, Hartley, Lancaster Panciatichini, Alishin and Albert Costa just heading Jan Carrells to the finish fastest lap by Ricciardo great performance by him did not finish by Pentas that's going to really hurt his championship because he was running in third coming into the event here so frustrating for him this is what it looks like now Alishin just a three point lead over Ricciardo and we had that uh, retirement Guerrieri just four points behind now and Harley also really in with the shot as is still Pentas, Coletti, Costa Berton, Zampieri and John Lancaster round out our top ten. So, variety has been the story so far. We're going to take a short break here on Motors TV. Back with more action very soon. Welcome back to World Series by Renault Review here on Motors TV. And from the very hot weather in Hungary, we head across to Manicur, the Circa Neve de Manicur. We have the French Grand Prix from 1991 up until 2008. And uh, it's a great opportunity for championship leader at the halfway point, Mikhail Aleshin, so far having a couple of victories. He gets his opportunity to demonstrate the Renault F1 car at Manicur. The Russian driver has been on form just about everywhere taking podiums at almost every circuit throughout the year so far. And of course, he aims to be the second Russian in Formula One alongside Vitaly Petrov. Actually, it was an amazing experience um, to drive this car. It's a great car and I like the circuit a lot. I think it's uh, one of the greatest days in my life. doesn't matter from which class do you go, but if you come to F1, if you sit in, uh, behind the steering of an F1 car, it's completely different to anything. You need to adapt big time. Because F1 has really strong brakes and uh, really, really a lot of grip. Uh, I, I will have uh, the full day, proper day test in uh, the latest car in Formula 1 Re uh, Renault. So, of course, I would push as hard as I can. But uh, the main point is to win the championship, and not be not only because of the test in Formula One. It is very strong championship, World Series this year, and uh, it's just very important to win it for your future. Indeed, it is. With as we said, drivers like Vettel and Kubica coming from this championship, but for the meantime, he's got a very challenging day ahead of him, much like the second race at Spa Francorchamps and the opening race at Motorland, wet conditions greet the drivers here and Manny Kaur has been tricky throughout the weekend and in race one Alishin is behind leader Guerrieri who is charging hard to try and take another victory three victories so far this season had to miss out Monaco did Guerrieri because of budget issues which was hugely frustrating and really dented his championship challenge but look at the fight that's on between Alishin and Guerrieri Twenty-three minutes remaining. Remember, it's a 45-minute plus one lap, and the crews have to run uh, what they call an LAC, a light aerodynamic configuration, in race one, which means they have to run a slightly lower downforce. Look at the wing planes on the back, and that makes the cars a lot more nervous to drive. Normally, on a day like today, you'd allow the cars to be run full 
downforce to give the drivers as much grip as possible. Of course, they run on Michelin wet weather tyres. They can soften off the car. Look at the difference in lap times. Just 0 0.07 seconds between Alation and Guerrieri. Virtually nothing in it. Difficult out of the Adelaide hairpin as they charge down through into the first of the two chicanes. And around the outside, Alicia, well, that's a very brave move if he can make that one stick on Guerrieri as they sweep across. Now, of course, Guerrieri runs a little bit wide, bounces across the uh, painted surface there. So they sweep into the 180, the very, very difficult, very long hairpin that then sweeps back into a little right-hand kink as they then go down to the Estoril corner, which requires huge commitment, totally unbalances the car through the right-hand part as they turn right. Interesting, Guerrieri already going offline, but as he turns, he's got to wait to make sure that the car doesn't run too wide. Bit of understeer from the race leader, as there is from Alicia in second place, and just behind them. Tanya Bertrand, sorry, uh, Nelson Panchatici in with a great shout. The Frenchman, of course, known the circuit incredibly well. Just 21 years old, the Parisian driver, looking for a good result on his home ground, former Renault driver, development pilot, and a up in the Spanish F3 series in the past. Some GP2 with the Durango team. Meanwhile, has been racing in the Super League Championship. You see the discussions between the crew at Carlin, and it is Alicia who is in the lead. Alicia has got himself ahead of Guerrieri. So, so important. Here you can see as they came out of the final corner, Guerrieri fighting to keep the car balanced, loses a little bit of traction on the way. Oh, drama! Was running wide at this stage. Panchatici is looking so good. Panchatici moved the two drivers in the Junior Lotus racing team. Very frustrating for him, just edging the car back onto the circuit. And for Bruno Mendes, the Spaniard in the Entwetten car. Just reminding us just how difficult it is. It's the 2009 European Open Formula 3 champion was Mendes, the 19-year-old. But for Relation, it looks like he's going to be able to bring the car home, get the job done. Is this going to be win number three for Mikhail Relation? see how much the circuit's dried out now and obviously you'll see drivers moving offline to try and find the damper part of the circuit to keep those Michelin tyres cool otherwise the tread pattern can just fall away from you but no such troubles for Alicia who elegantly slides the car out of the final corner well his prize drive in an F1 car has obviously spurred him on and did a brilliant job to get the car done just edging ahead of Guerrieri and then Coletti, another podium for the Monogas driver, ahead of Panciatici, recovered to fourth. Zampieri, Ricciardo, Pentas, Costa, Berton and John Lancaster, the Englishman, finishing 10th position. Fastest lap for Stan Pentas, who seems to enjoy these conditions, doing similarly well in Barcelona last year and obviously doing some strong runs earlier in the year in these difficult conditions as well. So race two with 35 and a half minutes plus one lap remaining a queue of cars all come into the pits there's also some penalties being issued Coletti getting his stop done in the background see two of the cars and that was Lancaster and Alicia coming out after their stops Blue flags waved from the marshal at the end because of the nature of the pit lane exit here in Manicure. I've seen drivers uh, when they had the Grand Prix here cross that blend line before and get big penalties. Federico Leo gets his stop done. The Pons racing driver bringing the car back out. Anton Nebelitsky. Uh, KMP racing car, they're a 20 year old Russian. Well, Julian Leal 
very confusing for commentators. We have Julian Leal and Federico Leo. So uh, easily said, easily mistaken the two of them. Leal, the 19-year-old Colombian, in this car here, the two car uh, international drag racing car. And this is Nathaniel Berton, looking very, very strong throughout the weekend. A bit of graining on the front right Michelin tire, as you can see. Clouds in the distance, but so far brilliant sunshine, meaning no such problems as they had in race one with the difficult conditions. Lancaster, meanwhile, charges three in the Fortec car, took a race win at the end of last year, Lamont. Some very strong drivers coming through this series from all over the world, some English drivers like James Walker have raced in this series in the past. Lancaster, we mentioned before. A friend of mine, Duncan Tappy, did a couple of races a little while ago. And of course, Oliver Turvey took victory at Monaco in 2009 for the uh, Carlin team. And lots of talented drivers from all over the world will come to World Series. It's such an important step on the ladder most drivers tend to move from formula three into world series sometimes from formula renault into formula renault two liter that is into world series we'll see the action from the formula renault two liter cars a little bit later ricciardo drive through illegal change of tires on the grid was the problem after the uh, allotted time that you're allowed to take the take the change that's going to hurt his championship alicia takes his mandatory stop Absolutely crucial where the Russian driver comes back out in the pack with still just over 32 minutes remaining. And then it's his Berton. Natalia Berton brings his car in. Can't quite see who that is ahead of them. Be one of the four tech drivers. He swings the car into the Draco Racing Pit. Italian team, so experienced, of course. Champions, as we said, with uh, Bertrand Baguette last year. Association with Force India F1 team. And over the years, have been hugely successful in just about every level of motorsport that they've raced at. Board with Gail Alishin as he sweeps through. Many core turn one. off as you can see the conditions have changed yet again very very hard to judge the level of grip and of course this formula one spec surface here that we have a many curve very high levels of grip in the dry but can instantly change where the circuits obviously had a build up of rubber over the weekend with the four different categories each having at least two races plus all the qualifying and testing you see just could not stop the car just outbreak itself remember you can adjust the brake bias on the single-seater race cars, in fact, on all of the cars that we see racing here as part of the World Series package to allow for these sort of conditions. Let's see, that was, I think, Caruso, perhaps. Jan Caruso, yes, it was. Jan Caruso runs wide, the Czech driver instantly in trouble, and that means that Berton, Natalia Berton is right in at the back of uh, Caruso, the same sort of problem, just couldn't get the car stopped. We're saying is that you can change the brake bias, wind it more to the rear so that it becomes a bit more 50-50. Normally in dry conditions, it's all on the front. Hartley takes his stop, almost stalls the car there for the 20-year-old New Zealander. Based in the F3 Euro Series and in the World Series by Renault Championship. Hugely uh, commanding series, Berton leads Ricciardo now by, from Salicardo Alicia Costa and Guerrieri, so Nathaniel Berton, the Frenchman is in tremendous position, a 20 year old Parisian who was 6th in the uh, Formula Renault Euro Cup in the 2 litre cars and 3rd in the Western European Championship in that and turned down a chance to race in the GP3 series with the ART team, this certainly is a much higher level in terms of performance in the GP3 cars. They're new, of course, another association with Renault, the turbocharged Renault engine single-seaters that run alongside GP2 and, uh, of course, as part of the Formula 1 package, so hugely prestigious. But here, oh, look at this, the, the uh, back lines being laid from the car just ahead there. 
Nation has recovered well from that drama earlier where he ran into the gravel down at the Adelaide hairpin. He's putting big pressure on Salakada now. And the Czech driver having taken podium on home ground at Bruno. Fighting hard now to keep the championship leader behind him. And so Alessio pull off a great move here. Is he going to pull off the same move on Salakada as he did on Salakada's teammate Guerrieri? I think he has almost touching wheels. Salakada squeezing him down. And Alessio may be thinking championship backed out of it very well. Meanwhile, with the weather conditions massively improving, Berton now under massive pressure by Daniel Ricciardo, the Monaco winner, charging down. Behind Berton, this would be his first win in this series if he could take this. And for Draco, it would be their first win of the series as well. This year, of course, the Tech One team have been hugely successful. The team behind, so Italian team versus French team and French team versus Australian driver. Ricciardo, the Red Bull reserve driver in Formula One. So he really is on the verge of possibly joining his countryman Mark Webber in Formula One. Of course, their association, Red Bull's association with Renault being, of course, that they uh, use the Renault engines in their RB6 F1 car, for arguably the best all-round package throughout 2010 so far. Both Vettel and Webber winning races, of course. Webber winning at Monaco and Ricciardo winning at Monaco, so a Red Bull Australian double. Well, Berton under the most amount of pressure on his final lap. Jolly, he can just hang on now. Nathaniel Berton holds on to take victory. Punches the air with delight. Fantastic performance. And I think that's maybe Mama Berton, perhaps he certainly looks uh, hugely relieved. Managed to stay very, very calm, I'm sure. Her heart rate was going crazy. But a tremendous performance, making the best of such difficult conditions. Berton wins from Ricciardo and Salacada, another brilliant podium, hangs on ahead of Alicia and Costa Mendes. Best performance by Mendes so far this season. Coletti, Pentas, and then Guerrieri rounding out the top ten. And uh, Ricciardo managing to nick the fastest lap. This is what the championship looks like now. Alicia just nine points ahead of Ricciardo. Guerrieri a further seven points behind. Then Pentas, Berton and Coletti and Hartley all separated by just four points. It is getting very, very close. We've now taken ourselves into the second half of the championship. So we will go off to the Hungara ring for the next couple of rounds of World Series by Renault. So, as quite often is the case at this time of year, fantastic weather conditions greeted everybody in Hungaro Ring. And also Vitaly Petrov there, the Russian Formula One star, did some demo laps. And we're joined by Jean-Marie Bijard. He's a famous French showman. And uh, enjoying himself. Some colourful language, those of you who speak French fluently will know that that was quite spectacular. But the action on the track between Stan Pentas and Brandon Hartley for third position. The leader is uh, Daniel Ricciardo, who's just absolutely disappeared up the road and gone, just dominated from the front. And uh, Hartley knows he needs to get a good result, get some championship points back under his belt. Pentas still very much in with the shout. So close between the uh, battle between the drivers for third, fourth, fifth, sixth position. The Tech One driver Hartley putting more and more pressure on Pentas. The Four Tech Motorsport Richard Dutton's team have been so successful in every level of motorsport in uh, Formula Renault UK, in the two litre series. Multiple champions there with drivers like Mike Conway and most recently in uh, 2010, Tom Blomqvist, the son of Stig Blomqvist, looking very good for a championship in the new two-litre cars. Duncan Tappy, another driver, he moved from two-litre. Renault into 3.5, champion for them. 
Sam Bird now in GP2, raced with them as well in 06. But these two drivers are absolutely on the limit. Ricciardo, a Formula Renault two-litre driver. And Stem Pentis, in fact, raced in the British Championship as well with the CRS team. But Ricciardo, no such dramas, just absolutely walked away. A massive, massive margin of victory for Ricciardo. Totally unpressured, very consistent in his lap times really has on a very difficult and demanding day conditions over 30 degrees wins by 13 seconds from his biggest championship rival Mikhail Aleshin, Pentas, Hartley, Panchatici, Costa, Carlos, Zampieri, Rosenweig and Kunimoto round out the top 10. One of the most important things to mention that happened over the weekend in uh, Hungary was the lack of the ISR team on the grid. Both of those cars failing scrutineering some cracks were found in the tubs and both Salakada and Championship Challenger Guerrieri were forced to sit out the race week and hugely disappointing and frustrating for them. As our friend, Monsieur Bigard, enjoys the atmosphere on the grid, takes loads of photos, and with his friend, clearly enjoying everything about this weekend. Drama for Hartley. Stopped on track. Just under a minute and a half ago, was fighting hard for position in the middle of the order. And just lost out running wide at one of the Hungara rings, many chicanes. Meanwhile, Pentas leads from Costa, Alishin, Zampieri, Manso and Ricciardo. With a minute and a half to go, safety car you would expect to be called. Pentas, such a strong run into their position in the race earlier in the weekend. Albert Costa looking good for his best result of the season, just ahead of Alishin. A red flag because... Hartley's car is in a dangerous position and it's too late in the race to warrant a safety car. And that brings the race to its conclusion. And the second victory of the season for Sten Pentis from Estonia. That's going to consolidate his challenge for third position with Guerrieri not being able to race here this weekend. That's going to help the 28-year-old's championship challenge to get himself into a possible podium championship-wise. A little bit belated there. I think they'd celebrate realising it would have been nice to see Sten take the chequered flag, but he'd done enough and thoroughly deserved the win after a great run through as the uh, very hot and bothered marshals understandably have a bit of a challenge there to try and get their car away. That's why the drivers need to put the steering wheels back on and pop the car into neutral, because unless you're familiar with how it works, it is quite a challenging thing to do. But a hot and sultry day. The spoils go to the Estonian, just ahead of Championship leader Alishin in third, and Costa, a great performance by him. Very, very impressive by the 19-year-old Spaniard. So Pentas by 6.2 seconds ahead of Costa, Alishin, Zampieri, another strong result for the Italian. Greg Mansell, a good drive for him into fifth position. Ricciardo, Nebelitsky, Rosenweig, Hartley and Coletti, with Mikhail Alishin taking fastest lap. 135.251. So after that, championship wise, now it's uh, just 11 points for Alicia and Ricardo. We're back with more action after the break on Moton. Welcome back to Motors TV's review of the 2010 World Series by Renault. And we head to Germany to the famous Hockenheim circuit and a change at the Tech One team. Brendan Hartley, no longer with the team, has been replaced by French driver Jean-Éric Verne. And he's saying, I've just won the British Formula 3 championship. Now, after taking the title, I'm setting my sights on Formula Renault 3.5 to see how well I can do. Making my debut here at Hockenheim with the Tech One team. So, this is what race one looked like. Ricciardo won from Guerrieri, Lancaster, Zampieri, Alicin, Manson, Coletti, Costa Berton and Nebelitsky. And into race two. Zampieri and Ricciardo as a staller at the back for Jake Rosenweig in the Carlin team. They swing the cars into the right hand. Acosta running very, very wide. The young Spaniard 
in the Epsilon Escari, but it's Zampieri leading from Guerrieri. I think Mansell up into third position, couldn't quite see that properly. There is Jake Rosenweig, Jake Rosenweig the young American driver, just 21 years old. 50 GP2 Asia Series, as well as the other things he's raced, a lot of varied racing considering his uh, young years. But look at this, it is Guerrieri trying it on around the outside. Can he get it done? No, he can't. And contact there. I think that was, was that Costa? I couldn't quite see who that was. It ended up. Off back was Guerrieri into the lead, though. Pentas, meanwhile, scrapping hard with Daniel Move in the Junior Lotus Racing Team. Those evocative British racing green and yellow colours, so much uh, legendary colour scheme. And of course, very poignant when we are at Hockenheim, of course, the scene of the loss of possibly the greatest racing driver of all time, Jim Clark, in 1968 here at Hockenheim Ring. Meanwhile, it is at the front, Guerrieri and Zampieri. Fighting hard. John Eric Verne, meanwhile, in seventh position in the Tech One car. Some dramas in qualifying. Meanwhile, his teammate Ricciardo is looking incredibly strong after taking victory in race one. What can he do as the crews come in for their stops now? Berton, winner at Manicor earlier in the year. Draco Racing doing their job very, very well. And Berton bringing the car neatly out. Keep an eye on the speed limiter. Ricciardo now in for his stop. Again, Tech One doing their job. Simon Abadé's team running not only the two cars for Vian and for Alicia. Now, drive through for car number eight for speeding in the pit lane. Remember, we mentioned I have to keep an eye on the speed limit. There is a, a limiter button that the drivers can press on the steering wheel, but if you press it a bit too late, maybe you cross the line coming into the pits too quickly or leave, release the button too early, or if there's a problem with the limiter, and this can hurt you big time. And this is going to hurt his championship points. Seeing how close it is. Meanwhile, Guerrieri in for his stop. The Argentinian driver just been so, so strong everywhere. Such a big blow to him having to miss Monaco for budget reasons and then having to not even be able to take part in either of the races in Hungary because of the technical problems with the cars, the cracks in the chassis that they found in the ISR cars and just no way they could replace those cars in time or those parts in time if you like such a significant obviously the main part of the car Salacada this is his teammate he's had some podiums already this year has been impressive at points putting himself uh, up on the podium in both Bruno and Manny Court Ricciardo takes his drive through hugely frustrating it'd be interesting to see where he ends up as he drops back into the pack Turn one so immensely quick. You can see the drivers, a lot of them running right beyond the exit curve there. Just ahead of them now, that's Federico Leo in the Pons racing car that just went through our shot there. This is what it meant. Guerrieri taking another win ahead of Zampieri. Yet another podium for him, Coletti Berton. And where did our man Ricciardo finish? Out of the points in 12th. This is what it means now. Eight points between Alessian and Ricciardo. It's hardly changed. Esteban Guerreri established himself now. Not that far behind. A step. 24 points behind the championship lead. At the home of British motor racing is Silverstone. The Northamptonshire circuit having changed massively for 2010. A completely different layout to the drivers that they would have seen before. And an absolutely jam-packed Silverstone circuit. And demonstration runs for the F1 car again. And we see some superstars here and a man that had a great relationship with Renault in Formula One was Nigel Mansell winning the 92 championship with the Williams morning, Power Cup. everybody, we're here at Silverstone which is the home of racing and uh, as you can hear in the background they've just started. Fantastic new developments here, you can see the new pit complex going up now, I've just visited there this morning, absolutely amazing and we're here with Renault World Series this weekend. 
Last week, weekend we were here with Le Mans series, so it's been a very, very busy year. Of course, Nigel racing the Ginetta car at Le Mans, and off the start, watch to see John Lancaster, the Englishman, has been so strong in qualifying the Forte car, gets very sideways, almost hits a Pierre and collides with Ricciardo. Ricciardo rolls out of the race. Steam pours from the radiator. What an absolute disaster for both of the front row men. Now, Lancaster seems to have got away with relatively little damage on the car. As Jean-Éric Vern now closing down after that chaotic start. Now, absolutely incredible what we've just seen there. Yellow flags waved furiously by the marshals on the start finish straight. It's Guerrieri, Vern, Berton, Costa, Hartley, Panciatici. Now, Hartley having been dropped by the uh, Red Bull sponsor uh, sponsorship situation. He's now found a spot uh, replacing Walter Grobmuller in the P1 team for the time being. A look at that, just got oversteer, maybe two cold tyres, just so much power going through the rear tyres there. Watch from Ricciardo's on board. You can see, gets sideways one way, I think maybe of trying to avoid making contact with... Guerrieri, it just flicked back the other way out of his control. An incredible situation. Both drivers unhurt. And in fact, Lancaster recovered and rejoined the race, but massive blow to Ricciardo. We saw just nine points of difference between Ricciardo and the championship leader, Alessian, coming into this race. Alessian down in seventh. And remember that the championship points are down to 10th position. Very small gap in points between them. 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 as the ISR team look on anxiously again. Guerrieri, well, if he'd have been able to complete the season, surely he would be, if not on a par with, maybe even leading the championships, been so far taking victories uh, at Spa, a double win at Bruno, and uh, the second race at Hockenheim. Looking good here for a win at Silverstone. So his versatility absolutely unquestioned. And the ISR team have provided him with such a superb car. And uh, it's a shame for Igor Salakada. He's not in the sec, having had a, a contretemps with uh, Daniel Zampieri. And they've both been uh, escorted from the circuit. Most unusual, usually affable Salakada. He's not here. And that's a great shame because he won't have seen a tremendous performance by Esteban Guerrieri. Another victory for him. Moves himself right back into contention for the championship, especially with that retirement for Daniel Ricciardo. A real blow for the Tech One driver, the Red Bull sponsorship, the absolutely evocative light blue and white flag of Argentina. Being waved to Guerrieri. He lights the rear Michelin tyres up. Guerrieri, Verne, Costa, Coletti, Panciatici and Salacada. Two top six finishes for both the ISA driver. Great drive by Jean-Éric Verne in only his second race weekend in the World Series by Renault. And uh, for Elishin, will be pleased to have just got himself a couple of more points there in seventh position. In fact, taking four points for that. But what a great performance for everybody at ISR. Delighted with the drive through there. Fantastic job. But Carreri takes it now uh, in race two from Ricciardo, taking the win on the very, very last lap, just edging ahead of Ricciardo in Verne and uh, so Elation out of the points. Now, the real controversy was after that race one win that we saw for uh, Guerrieri, he was excluded because he'd had a crash in qualifying and the cars had to race, uh, the team had to race like crazy to get the car repaired, just fish finishing it in time for race uh, one, because qualifying for the second race is on the Saturday morning, just before the first race. And in doing that, the team had inadvertently put some tape on part of the bodywork to secure the car. And uh, this is what he's pointing at. He's saying, look, no tape, because it was on that part of the car that the team had put tape. And because of that, he was protested by the Tech One team and excluded from the race one. And that gave the win to Jean-Eric Verne. So that is why he was so delighted to recover from that. This is what the points are. Three points between Alicia and Ricardo. And then Guerrieri is in there too.
So the final race meeting of 2010, and that is how close it is. Any one of those three drivers could still take the championship. And uh, it is going to be absolutely nail-biting stuff. The conditions, as you can see, very, very changeable. This massive enclave in the paddock. And we're joined by Lord Cossetti. The Lord, he is a uh, star of French hip-hop, for those of you who are not familiar with him, or Lord Co, as his name. And this is the final weekend for me to discover what's going on and to tell you all about it. So, away we go. Away we go, indeed. The final 10 minutes of the final round of the championship. Guerrieri is leading in front of Vien because he's now out of the championship chase because Daniel Ricciardo won race one in front of Elysian. It's only between Ricciardo and Elysian. One who finishes ahead of the other will be champion. As you can see, there's just five and a half minutes remaining of this race. And it's going to be absolutely vital for either of these drivers to be able to find some pace in these incredibly difficult conditions circuit that has uh, provided so much excitement over the years the circuit de Catalunya, just outside Barcelona who can forget that image of Ayrton Senna and Nigel Mansell who we saw earlier Mansell and him side by side going down the start finish straight almost centimeters apart well just almost touching this 4.727k circuit such a challenge the last part of the track here that the drivers are coming through the Sabadell Europe car and New Holland corners and slightly redesigned part of the track more technical at the end lap times wise Elation on a par with Ricciardo remember Elation far more experienced than Ricciardo in these cars having raced intermittently in these cars since 07 the Carlin team though hugely successful gave Sebastian Vettel a victorious debut in this championship back in 07 this is the difference though Ricardo and Alation 0.82 of a second slower Ricardo is than Alation 1.0099 seconds the gap just four and a half minutes left Guerrieri is away and gone is looking for another win to round out what's been a hugely impressive championship and certainly for a lot of people's mind he's been the driver of the season been the most successful in terms of wins if he takes this win it will be a six of the year the Carlin team nervously look on in the middle there Marcus Koch the Australian engineer I've had the pleasure of working with in the A1GP series and uh, in fact as a, as a driver coach many years ago so he's going to be willing on the Russian driver. See if he can get past Ricciardo. Similarly, Simon Abade and the Tech One team are going to be urging Ricciardo to find that bit of pace a bit sideways on the infield section as they come up La Caixa up the hill into this left-right section before the final part of the lap where they're going to be breaking through the, into the left hander then into the right 0.18 of a second look at the gap has come down by seven tenths of a second it's palpable now and it does seem like Ricciardo just can't carry as much speed as Elation and certainly doesn't seem to have the same level of traction as the Red Bull sponsored driver ahead of him but if this is fighting for the championship both drivers have had their ups and downs Ricciardo had that terrible misfortune at Silverstone when he was taken out at the start by John Lancaster totally accidentally by Lancaster to be fair to the Englishman but nevertheless the result was the same he barrel rolled the car over it went and he was out of the race on the spot recovered to take a tremendous second place in the second race of the weekend now let's see what the gap is it's four tenths of a second just a moment ago half a second this time it's just Seesaw and Ricciardo is just doing enough at the moment but it only takes the smallest of mistakes and it could mean that Alation is given his opportunity and this is just third position on the circuit but it is the battle for the win just in the front of the picture there the young lady with blonde hair at the front is Steph Tindall who looks after the PR side of things amongst others for Carlin team very very professional lady very very good at her, what she does and he's overseeing the uh, GP Keeping on the GP3 guys and the Formula 3 guys as well as the World Series Trevor Carlin and uh, 
Graham Chilton very much involved in overseeing this organisation with such a successful history. Look at Elise No looks for the cutback. Ricardo, though, is cute to that. And who can blame him? Surely there's this lap and maybe one more left after this one. Is it going to be three laps left or two laps left? Look for Elishin, he gets the cut back again. Has he got better traction up the hill? I think he has. And Elishin gets himself into third position and gets himself into a championship winning position. Aberdeen and the P1 team are absolutely distraught. They can't believe with just two laps left, I think it is, that Elishin has got himself ahead of Ricciardo. These two and the man who's looking likely to win the race, which is uh, Esteban Guerrieri, have been the absolute stars throughout the year. We've seen wins at other points in the year for drivers like Sten Pentis and for Nathaniel Berton and Jean-Éric Verne as a result of the exclusion of Guerrieri in race one at Silverstone. But certainly for these two guys have been the most consistent over the year. And at the moment, if it stays like this, Alessian will get the nod by just two points over Ricciardo. What a tremendous debut season for Ricciardo. Is it going to be another lap? I think it might be even two more laps. And here on board, let's have a look again. He goes in very deep. Ricciardo, therefore, is off of his normal racing line. Alessian straightens the car up much more effectively, gets better traction, better drive. And fair play to Ricciardo. Didn't do anything unfair, didn't move across on him. Vian is looking good for a second position. This is what it looks like, 138, 136, and Guerrieri a solid third ahead of Pentas and Costa are tied on points at the moment with where they're going to finish, but Pentas, having taken two wins, will get the nod for the position, for fourth position in the championship. I think that's about justified in terms of who's done what. That looks uh, about right, I think. Personally, Guerrieri, for me, has been the star of the season. Only he'd managed to take in those other three races with it being so close. Just 15 points behind. That is the amount of points he lost for being excluded at Silverstone. And of course, Elishin gained an extra point as a result of that. So it would have almost certainly. But then again, as you said, Ricciardo was someone lucky to be knocked out of the race. He takes fastest lap as well just to reinforce what a star this man is. As we see Mouvet just uh, running wide right late in the race and edging the car back on sorry it's Dean Stoneman of course the English driver who's taken over from Daniel Move in this this final race this man just winning the Formula 2 championship the uh, series which was a fight between him and Jolian Palmer of course uh, a race winner in the British Formula Renault championship and in the BARC series and hugely talented young man be interested to see what he does he gets a test with the Williams team as his prize and I mentioned earlier that uh, Manson, of course, was driving a Williams Renault, not a Renault Williams, as I think I might have alluded to. But it's going to be a test for Alishin at the end of the year in the Renault F1 team. Another Russian driver provides success. The first major championship, though, Petrov was runner-up in GP2 to Hulkenberg last year. And it looks like it's going to be victory in the championship if he can just keep it going for the remaining less. He's edged away now. By just over a second and a half from Ricciardo. He's a couple of seconds down on Verne. I don't think he's worried. Now, the question could be, of course, could jean eric Verne get into the equation here? Could the Frenchman back up uh, Mikhail Alessian? If he slows down and uh, and creates it a difficulty for Alessian, then maybe Alessian could be put under pressure again as the rest of the top ten, Nebelitsky, Karels, Lancaster and Costa, Jake Rosenweig, Looking like he's going to get a uh, finish just out of the points in this final round. Guerrieri, though, has been untroubled. The ISL driver has just edged away and just made the best of the conditions. As we saw, one of the Interwetten drivers just turning into the left-hander at the bottom of the hill there. Into La Caixa, named after the Spanish bank, of course. Who's going to be in the money at the end of this race? Well, it looks likely that it's going to be win number six for Guerrieri. But it is going to be the big prize going to Michaela Alishin. Assuming that nothing changes on this final lap. But with these conditions and with the added uh, intrigue of Jean-Eric Verne sitting there in second place. I wonder if he's had the call on the radio. It'll be very interesting to see if there is any team tactics being played. You couldn't blame them, could you? And you couldn't blame this man for 
being frustrated and not being able to challenge for the championship properly. Fantastic performance again by Esteban Guerrieri. Steph Tindall looks very, very, very concerned. In the background, the Lichens, uh, I think it's his girlfriend looking equally as concerned. And he's really caught up on Vian. Ah, that's a spin. That's it. The championship over, surely. At the end, a spin for for uh, Ricciardo, a delight for the boys at Carlin, absolutely thrilled at the championship victory for Mikael Aleixin, well he started the year with a victory in the opening round of the season in Spain, in Aragon, in difficult conditions and a brilliant drive to get ahead of his championship contender, Ricciardo means that with a win going to Guerrieri ahead of Venn, Aleixin, Ricciardo, Coletti, Panciatici, Nebelitsky, Carrells, Lancaster and Costa, that's the top ten. Guerrieri gets the fastest lap. Dean Stoneman on his debut in the series does a solid job despite that off. And that's what it is, just two points after all those races, after 17 thrilling races across Europe. Alessian wins it from Ricciardo. Esteban Guerrieri, the most amount of wins, the most amount of heartache and some great performances throughout the year. Welcome back to World Series by Renault, and we're with our friend uh, Jean-Mary Bijab. As always, joking away, thoroughly enjoying his time in Hungary. And I think they're asking him to cut because some of his language has been a little bit colourful. I think um, I won't bother translating for you. And, uh, if <laughs> you can see, entertaining if nothing else. So, in the Renault Clio Sport, he gets a chance to go and have a look around Angara Ring. Of course, part of World Series by Renault Weekend is we have the stunt shows. We also have the F1 demonstration and the legend that is Jean Ragnotti. Still a Renault, Renault factory driver, the winner of the 81 Monte Carlo Grand, uh, Grand Prix, Monte Carlo Rally. This is very, very excited. There's a lot of activities throughout the weekend. And I think uh, perhaps when I might uh, find that there's other people that could represent their brand a little bit more professionally shall we say as yes, loads of excitement the uh, stunt riders here the BMX display stuff for the family to do the extreme team you know, lots of dancers you know, for, uh, simulators for people to try so wherever you are in Europe if you get an opportunity to go to a World Series by Rano event do apply for the tickets early it's free to enter it's free to get in you just have to go online and register early and you can get a ticket and that would have kept him quiet for a little while wouldn't it I think the bunny hops continue in the Hungara ring. Of course, this was uh, midway through the season. And he's had a great time to watch the rest of the action and get a chance for us to return to some racing action with now back at the start of the season and Aragon with all new Formula Renault two litre cars, the uh, combination of uh, a carbon fibre chassis, a 220 horsepower Renault engine, and it's Negrao leading pick. It is uh, Alexandre Negrao, the uh, Spanish driver, sorry, the Brazilian driver in the Cram Racing team, just ahead of Shal Pic in one of the Tech One cars. You can see how early it is in the year that uh, the Tech One car of Pic has yet to be painted. It's still in its uh, in its naked carbon fiber color scheme michelin tires but a seven speed paddle shift gearbox front end of the car a lot more grip than the outgoing car the car that we saw people like kimi raikkonen and lewis hamilton sebastian vettel and robert kubica make their motorsport career debuts if you like at a high level They're all successful in various different championships Felipe massa another one who came through formula renault in europe negrao of course very famous surname uh, uh, alexandre Negrao, of course, uh, senior racing in sports cars, and Janji Negrao racing in GP2 as part of the uh, PK team and sports car racing. Look how difficult it is for these drivers to maintain grip. And the battle continues again, a timed race. Two races over the weekend, two qualifying sessions, and they're a battle throughout the pack continues. 
second place was Negrout and Pick. Meanwhile, the uh, 17 car, Negrout still under pressure from Pick. No doubt that either of these drivers have sufficient pace to be able to take victory. It's going to be such a significant thing to win the first round of the championship, to really stake your claim on the championship, and therefore mark yourself out as a driver to watch. Third position is Kevin Corius, the Estonian driver, driving for the Karain and Brothers team. And then De Jong, Venturini and Bacetta, the English driver, Luciano Bacetta in the Interwetten team. Venturini, the number five... Uh, in fifth position, rather, in uh, one of the Epsilon Escardi cars, the uh, Spanish team on home ground here in Aragon. Liv Ategui, Vainino, Vainino uh, Mancinelli, Riberes, and Valent. Oncavori, Olive, and Reef. It's the top 15. Craig Reef in 15th. Teammate to uh, Bacetta in the Interveten team, the German driver. They swing the cars through this very technical section. Not far from Zaragoza. As you can see, a relatively new circuit and lots of space to work with in this part of the world. Incredible, something like in the region of nine circuits in, in mainland Spain now that drivers and crews and championships can choose from. Some of them, like Catalonia and Jarama, very well established. And some of them, like this one, and of course, the relatively new circuits at uh, Valencia being one of them. on here instantly providing a hit between the with the drivers and cruisers uh, pick has a look and contact and out of the race goes Negrao is pick gonna be able to recover and Corius coming through ahead of De Jong Daniel De Jong the Dutch from the MP Motorsport car the Dutch driver and a Dutch team that's gonna I'm sure end up in uh, the stewards office after the race way too way too small a gap for pick that was really never on and understandably, the cram team. Well, I could translate that. I do know what that means in Italian, but I don't think I'll bother. Those of you that speak Italian will know that that was a very, very upset, understandably upset crew member there. One of the crew at, uh, as you see, Negrao just trudges away. The Brazilian driver had done a great job so far. Meanwhile, De Jong looking good now for second position behind Kevin Corias, the Korean and Brothers driver. Finnish team with an Estonian driver. Meanwhile, Venturini, an Epsilon Escardi driver now, ahead of Bacetta in fourth. He's made his way up really well. There's Luciano Bacetta, who had raced previously in uh, things like the former Palmer Audi series. Seen of it and moved across to race into Europe. But in the end, it was Corias, De Jong, Bacetta getting ahead of Venturini. Pick recovered to fifth. Carlos Gulliff, another Estonian driver in sixth. Vainio in uh, seventh position, and the rest of them further down. Jordan Oakes, another British driver, unfortunately didn't finish, who uh, had been racing in the British Formula Renault series. So we then move over to the second race of the weekend, with Negrao leading and Peak in second, and a battle between Valente and Corias. Corias running very well, Valente able to keep the car straight at that point. Easily done, easy to outbreak yourself. These cars, huge amount of grip, very, very good uh, way for, for teams to see or for the motorsport community to see the level of talent that's uh, in motorsport at this level. There's absolutely no doubt in drivers like Pique and Negrao and in uh, Curious that you've got some of the best young talent coming through. A bit of a dodgy move there from Negrao is understandably probably still not exactly keen on giving out to pick and the Tech 1 team much space after being taken out of uh, race one. Meanwhile, as they come through the pack, Corias still fighting hard, the 28 car on the back of the cars immediate in front of him. A lot of potential in Corias. Lots of people feel that he's going to be one of those drivers to watch throughout the season as he had to pick, of course, the brother of Schaupik, 
The race is in GP2. Formula World, former World Series by Renault racer as well. And a victor in many races was Schalpik. Out and pick. Nothing in it between these two at the front of the pack. 90 minutes remaining of this race. One of the great things for the drivers that race in the Renault 2 litre series, as we see in the background. Battle continuing between. Uh, oh, God, there! A big moment for Pick. And he clips the back off Negrau. And, well, he kind of reaped what you sow a little bit there on that one. If you watch, you can see Pick pulls out. Negrau goes with him, puts him on the grass where it's wet from the overnight rain. He spins, clatters into the back of Negrau just as Negrau's about to turn in. And Curious. Just edges his way through. And you could argue maybe that uh, perhaps by pushing him onto the grass, and it was a pretty out outrageous bit of driving in the first place. And he got his uh, just desserts. He got his uh, a fair result off the back of that. For Epsilon Escardi. I'm going to be watching with interest to see what's happening. Uh, it's now Valent leads Corias, Ategui, Bacheta, Riberes and Martins. minutes remaining Valente is looking very very strong go into the latter part of this race Curious after his uh, victories both times now in both the races we've seen drivers that have just uh, been beneficial or benefiting from uh, from the mistakes that's been made by the drivers around them so I you know for the Frenchman Hugo Valent and he's uh, going to be pleased that uh, as we see in the pit lane the number 10 car Daniel de Jong finished on the podium in race one is that pick I think that is out to a pick just uh, trudging away I think pick maybe had uh, been able to Take some heart from the fact that at least he's on the pace. Valent and Curious. Valent teammate to pick in the attack one another. The um, unsponsored, unmarked cars, as it were, with it yet to have a, a livery on the car. Mario Vanio, the other driver in the Tech One team, the Finnish driver. It's very strong throughout the weekend as well. Beres, one of the other Epsilon Escardi drivers. And that's the difference. Corias quicker by seven tenths of a second than Belen on that lap. Quite a significant amount, even on a long lap here, which is only just under a couple of minutes here. And that is the fastest lap of the race. minutes remaining plus one lap here in the opening round opening race weekend of world series by Renault they visit all the same race meetings as their bigger brothers the world series by Renault 3.5 cars except Monaco that's a standalone race for the 3.5 series cars all of the other race meetings from uh, Motelan to Spa to Bruno Manicur Hungara ring Hockenheim, Silverstone and Catalonia, that's their championship. As I said, an all new car, all new carbon fibre chassis. The uh, Caparo design car. Epsilon Escardi involved in the construction of it as well. And a big move down the inside for Curious. Has he got it done? He has. He's managed to just get ahead of Valen. The Spaniard really didn't have much in terms of an answer. The Frenchman rather didn't have much of a term, but an answer to the Estonian driver. Hugo Valent is going to be struggling now to find another run, although he's just got enough momentum out of that last corner to maybe have a look. This is how it was done. Let's look at Corius. He just tees it up well. 
Glenn doesn't really move across to defend. Down the inside, late on the brakes, punching down through that seven-speed gearbox. Holds the car tight enough in as they go into the right hand and the 28 car has got the job done. So this is what it looked like. Corius, a double win for him ahead of Valen. Bart Helkema, the Dutchman in the other of the Coranen brothers' cars. Bacetta, Riberas, Oaks, Honkavori. And this is what the championship looks like. Gorias leads by 12 points from Bacetta. And then Valent, De Jong and Helkema. <laughs> So moving on to the Hungara ring later in the season. Already we'd seen Corius take another victory at Spa. And a win for Artia Pick as well. Then a double win for Pick and Bruno. And in the Manicor it was Corius who took one win and Venturini who took the other. Meanwhile off on the inside. Corius and Bacetta falling over each other. Bacetta had a problem. And Corius is out. So the championship leader out of the race. That is the back of Luciano Bacetta's car. The uh, young English driver really struggling with a problem there, but that's a big blow for Corius. Looks like he's going to be forced to retire. He is almost at the entry to the pit lane. See the uh, the wheels looking very askew on the right-hand rear wheel. is completely broken. Suspension, possibly a drive shaft as well. And for Corius, having had such a strong start so far, four wins to his name at this point in the season. He's handed the initiative to the other drivers. And it's looking likely that uh, Pick is going to be the best of the drivers to be able to make the mess. Now, second in the race at the moment is English driver Will Stevens, who's been racing in the British Championship with Manor Competition, uh, taking a race win earlier in the year already at Brands Hatch. And the Young man, very, very strong in cart. He drove for the Fortec team in 09. Car off there, the Tech 1 team for Pick. Now, liveried in the distinctive red and white colours. Much easier for commentators like me to see than the plain carbon black that we saw earlier in the year. One of the MP Motorsport cars coming through our shot. And a real scrap there between Valent and Martins. And contact! Off goes Valent and out of the race, broken rear suspension. Other side to what we saw happen to Corius. Always difficult braking so late and hard into turn one at Hungara Ring. One of the few real good overtaking spots if you get the run out the previous corner right, really does make a big difference. But Pick is now really getting his championship challenge on track. If only he'd been able to get those. Uh, those results at the start of the year he was looking good for a, at least a couple of second places in Aragon at the start of the year but unfortunately contact with uh, Negrau in both races put him out and while the number nine MP motorsport car of uh, Carlos Galif the other of the Estonian drivers fighting in the championship just ahead of the pack it is going to be Artur Pick, though, who's going to come through to take another victory, his fourth victory of the season, and to put himself well and truly in the championship fight, especially with Corias not finishing race one here in uh, on a hot and sunny Hungaroring, 30 degrees. Stevens, a great performance. Oh, contact late in the race there. What's that? Liv getting barged out of the way. I think think that was uh, one of the Coranian cars that was doing that. It's Mickey Wextrom, I think, maybe. Martins, Lukovic, Helkema, Riberes, and Liv. So this is what it looks like. Pick wins from a brilliant drive from Will Stevens on his debut in uh, the Euro Series this year. Vanyo in third in Tech 1, got a 1-3. Olive Stockinger in ATEC Grand Prix, the uh, Filipino driver who's been so strong in the British Championship along with his teammates uh, Thomas Palkis, who of course is a Hungarian, and also with Nick Yellowley racing in that British Series with the ATEC GP Series. So, race two. It is Aro Vanio who takes pole position in the Tech 1 racing ahead of Bacetta, Pick, Venturini, Helkema, Will Stevens, Genis Olive, Adam Kaut, Mickey Vekstrom, Miguel Otegui, Uge Valente, Riberes, Stockinger, Lukovic, and Martins in 16th position for Cram Competition. Nick Yellowley, one of the ATEC drivers out of Kulmanen, 
Yukon Kavori, Daniel De Jong, Andre Negrao, Bryce Bussey, Rio Harianto, team first there, Jakob Noll, Thomas Palkis after problems in qualifying, and Carl Oscar Leif uh, at the back of the grid. So into race two. Vanio Bacetti, Pete Corius, Venturini, and the drivers to watch for. Breaking hard, and it is Luciano Bacetta who just has the edge ahead of Pick. I think it is just ahead of Pick. Venturini in there as well. Lots of drivers running wide at turn one. Breaking hard into turn two into the double left hander. Charging then down through that tricky section. Stevens there in the very distinctive Virgin livery, Virgin type livery, because of course Manor competition associated with Virgin F1. It is Manor Motorsport that was, and uh, Manor Formula One effectively. They've uh, got an association with Virgin, John Booth and the team, Tony Shaw and Sarah Shaw running the Manor competition team. Oh, and off, and a roll there. Is that Adam Cout? I think that is Adam Cout, the Czech driver. And in the Krennic team, most importantly, let's just hope Adam's OK. He's moving around inside the car. It's a horrible situation for a racing driver to be in, being unable to get himself out of that safety car, understandably deployed, de deployed rather, immediately to allow them to get young Adam Cout out of the car quickly and safely. The Arena Megan F1 car comes out. Superb road car, one of the uh, best cars in its category. has been used not just in this series, but also in the British Formula Renault and Renault Clio Cup Championship. Stop string fellow driving that car ahead of the pack at the British Touring Car Support Races. And of course, Renault is such a strong supporter of motorsport all over the world. Having an involvement in the UK, for example, is going back to 1974. Count clearly OK. Thoroughly upset, I would imagine. See if we can see what caused it. see the number of the driver that was involved in that looks like it's one of the Epsilon Escardi drivers but can't say for sure who that was and up and over he goes most importantly he's okay car not so much so but I think they'll be able to get that car repaired for the next time we see the guys in action which will be at Hockenheim meanwhile into the pit lane MP Motorsport of Kulmanen comes in Ali Kulmanen, obviously uh, got a problem. At the restart, Bacetta under pressure from Peak. Just one lap remaining after this. That's the difference between the two of them in lap times, just 0.049 of a second, which on such a long lap is absolutely negligible. But Pick looking good for another strong result. This could really close down the gap between him and Corius. Swings the car into a really demanding turn four, and then charging into this long sweeping turn five down into the chicane. He'll be breaking into the right left part of the chicane. Take a bit of curb on both sides, punching slightly uphill. Very important to get a neat exit out of there, sweeping through. The left hander and into a section of the circuit that starts to gradually edge downhill. Seems to gain momentum at each subsequent corner. Very, very quick section here. Really takes a lot out of the drivers physically, this circuit, especially on a weekend here, Hungary, where it's been in the region of 30 degrees throughout the weekend. Really has uh, tested the driver's fitness and the setup of the cars to make sure that they get the best out of the tyres. Jetta, meanwhile, is looking very strong, has done a weekend. Been on the podium earlier in the year. At Motorland and also, and uh, Bruno and Manicourt. One lap to go, L1P1, that's what every racing driver wants to see on his pit board as he starts the final lap, lap one, position one. Sometimes you might see a gap, certainly if it's qualifying, the crews will inevitably put the uh, how long there is to go in a session and maybe what position you are and where you need to be in terms of time to move up if you're a little bit away. Or 
We're at an ideal position, obviously, if it says P1, and then plus whatever you are ahead of the rest of the, ga uh, the uh, gaggle of cars. Let's see on the rolling clock what the gap is as they come through the sector. Just 3.37, two of a second. Quicker was that peak than Bacchetta. 0.268, the gap on this final lap. Charlie Luciano Bacchetta has got enough in it, in the car, in the Intervetan car, to be able to hold on in there. This team with such a lot of success, of course, uh, saw success with drivers throughout the years. In the 3.5 championships, there's been so many... Uh, Different teams and drivers that have succeeded in Intervet have also had success uh, at, at various different levels. Been around since 2001. And, uh, the Austrian team have uh, had success with uh, Salvador Duran. And, uh, they won the championship in 2006 with Andy Suchek. And, uh, races in Renault V6 in 2004 at Monaco amongst others but added to their list of successful drivers is Luciano Bacchetta the Englishman gets the job done a tremendous performance by him brings the car home 0.6 of a second ahead of Arthur Pick Vanio our pole man takes third another great performance by Will Stevens Bart Hilkemer whose brother uh, Thomas actually drives for Manor competition ahead of Ekstrom Olivier Stockinger Thomas Palkis from the back of the grid a great drive for him as it was from Venturini and Nick Yellily. Another good drive from the other of the ATEC drivers there. So Bacchetta, Pick, Vainio, Stevens, Hilkema, Corius taking six, Vekstrom, Olivier, Stockinger, and Palkis round out our top ten. Nick Yellily again in fourth and Verbiero down in 15. So, for our man, Jean-Marie Bigard, he's had a great win. He's topped up his tan. He's at number one on the podium. And he gets a chance to present the awards. And uh, very popular in France. Yes, as a resigned Artie Pic on the left-hand side there. He's going to be pretty pleased with what's been done. As the champagne starts. And you'd think with a mouth as big as Monsieur Bijard, he'd be able to take a whole bottle of champagne in one go, but maybe not. Uh, Kevin Corrios leads the championship by just 11 points after that's how much of a difference. Peaks weekends made by Chatter a further 10 points behind and Venturini tying with Vainio and Olivier in sixth position. So, he said that the weekend is finished. He's looking like he's had a great time. And the guys uh, have enjoyed learning all about World Series by Renault, having a run around the circuit and seeing some of the top racing drivers in uh, Renault 3.5. Also in, of course, the 2-litre Renault and, of course, in the uh, Megane. Euro Cup plus the youngsters in the 1.6 F4 as it's known we're going to see some action for them a little bit later but so far the championship is looking very close between Kevin Corius and between Art Pick join us after the break here on Motors TV welcome back and we are now fighting or seeing the fight rather between Kevin Corius and Arthur Vanio as they go into the Race one at Hockenheim. Race, uh, race two, rather. Corius having won race one. This is round six of the series. We get a chance to see this fight between Corius Fainio, Pick, Tanison, and Bacchetta. There, they're going to be the drivers that we're going to be watching. The Tech one, uh, Fainio has been right in amongst the fight for the championship so far but at this stage so far yet to see a victory for him so can he do that oh, contact there Beckstrom and Honkavuri off didn't quite see the, what, what happened there it just looked like the the two of them just tangled and not much you could do about that teammates as well so that's going to be an interesting conversation when they get back to the Karina brothers pit with uh, Kevin Corius having won race one they've had a good weekend so far but here we go look the two of them nose to tail as they come into start about to come to the stadium section and 
behind that. <laughs> Beckstrom just locks up, and Honkavuri has really nothing much he could do about that. Just shoved off quite unceremoniously. So the battle for first continues between Kevin Curias and Artevanio. Finnish driver in a French team, number seven, and a Estonian driver in a Finnish team as Simon Abade looks on. He's looking for another victory. Out to pick, of course, has been taken four wins so far. It would be great for the for uh, for Tech One as we see a spin for a live in the MP Motorsport car. The Dutch team and the Estonian driver Carlos Galiv not having as good a time of it as his countryman Korios is. Is he going to be able to get the car going? Otherwise, we might end up with a safety car. Meanwhile, Olivier contact for the Epsilon Escardi drivers. I think it might have been Olivier and Ribera's perhaps falling over each other there. It's difficult to see. Certainly, it was two of the Epsilon Escardi cars that got involved in that. Not long left now as Liv gives up, obviously, whatever it was. And there was contact there with one of the Interwetten drivers. I wonder if that was Craig Reef or whether that was maybe Luciano Bacchetta. I couldn't really see who it was. It's certainly an Interwetten car, and it's broken the rear suspension, scattered some uh, gravel onto the circuit. Meanwhile, we see braking hard down into this section. Well, you can see what's happened is that they've all kind of tangled with each other. I think that was Reef who tied tangled into uh, a three car of uh, Venturini and Emery Barris got caught up in it as well not really much that anyone could do about that once uh, I think Reef just sort of bars his way down the inside could have been Lukovic as well I'm not quite sure which of the interventing drivers it was who's caused that but that's not concern of Cordius or Vanio at the moment, they're just scrapping hard to finish the race. Meanwhile, Vekstrom, car and uh, Onkavuri's cars are still stranded in the gravel after that rather, <laughs> rather silly accident where they just fell over each other and completely outbraked one another. And certainly, I think it was Vekstrom who was the man that did the pushing in that case. You can see this uh, darkened part of Tarmac where they, they use uh, this bit of the straight there for drag racing. Archer Pick. Closing down on Corius in the championship. He's going to lose a bit of ground. Already having uh, seen Pick, uh, seen Corius rather take victory in the first race of the weekend. Second for Vanio and third for Pick. Meanwhile, Coleman and Noll fighting hard. Jakob Dole teammate to Adam Kaut. We saw have that spectacular roll at uh, in the Hungary ring here at Hockenheim. It is the uh, Kali Kulmanen, the, the uh, Finnish driver. He's putting pressure on Jakram Noll. Noll, another driver who expect to see some strong things from uh, from him in the Krenik Motorsport. A Czech team with the Czech drivers on board and the Dutch team behind MP Motorsport. A of experience in the team there. continues its distinct position so just goes to highlight that these cars always provide action somewhere in the grid so a fight for the win it's between Corias and Vino Vino look Vino looking for his first win of the year Corias already having taken five wins so far win six is looking very good Vino three tenths of a second quicker than Corias on that last lap but he's going to need to be a lot closer. These cars are so efficient aerodynamically and mechanically. And you need to get a good run down the inside, be able to outbreak somebody or hope that the driver in front makes a mistake. And on a hot day like this here in Hockenheim Ring, the other factor, of course, is tyre degradation. If the tyres go away, such a lot of rubber put down over the race weekend. That combined with so much heat could make a big difference in terms of how well the tyres are working. Crane and Brothers team looking on nervously, as you'd expect. We're hopeful that their man is going to be able to extend his lead further at the top of the championship. Certainly, we'd pick a little bit further down in the, the other of the Tech, tech One cars, or one of the other Tech One cars. It's certainly going to be a good haul of points. 
And there's at least a three-point gap between first and second. He took five points out of him at, at the first race, and it's looking likely here that it's going to be another five points will be gained on pick. And they are the two that are fighting most for the championship moment. Now, something flapping around by the looks of things on the engine cover of Fanio's cars. Would it just the, uh, the heat haze that's been provided? Here's much quicker there, much stronger run. Corias is going to have to fight very hard. And oh, wow! Almost contact between the two of them. Tremendous bit of driving by Vanio with a legendary finished car control coming in there to avoid contact. A bit of a harsh chop there by Corias. He would have perhaps expected the two of them to tangle, but brilliant driving by Vanio, especially there. 0.267 quicker on that previous run through there. Vanio. Oh, yes, I think. He's going to be slightly fortunate to have been able to maintain the win because Vanio is clearly quicker on that run through. And I think the Tech One team are going to be a little bit upset with uh, Corius' driving at that particular point. He's been such a superb driver throughout the year, but it is going to be win six for him. He takes victory across the line. A great performance by Arno Vanio as well. <laughs> and the Karainen brothers to be delighted with that the team are absolutely chuffed with the job that's been done by their man as Pitt comes home for third ahead of uh, Javier Tarrison, Luciano Pacetta and uh, Ludwig Jon in uh, the one of the local teams but Helkema, Hugo Valent, Andre Negrau and Daniel de Jong round out our top 10 with Vanio taking fastest lap so now the gap some 21 points at the top between Corios and Pick. Pacetta having dropped away a little bit Vainio out, closing down slightly, and Venturini, Olive round out our top six. So, we go into the balance of the championship, and it's really starting to look very much like, as we go here at Silverstone, that Kevin Corius is in a great position to clinch the title. He's won the opening race of the weekend at Silverstone. Tanasson is leading. Corius close behind, though. Spaniard coming in at this late stage in the championship. In the Epsilon, Escari team immediately made his mark, as has also Carlos Sainz Jr. And the other drivers in there is Luciano Pacetta and Richard Singleton, the Englishman on home ground, coming in as a one off in the uh, first air team. Pacetta having raced at Silverstone with. Uh, first out in their car and doing a great performance or strong performance by them as well in the British Formula Renault Championship massive battle in that series between uh, Lewis Williamson, Tom Blomqvist and Thomas Palkis Will Stevens, Harry Tinknell any of those drivers could still win that championship in 2010 Lanasson though under more and more pressure as they break into Stowe Swing into the right hander. Down then into the left right at Abbey. Before they get through the club corner section. Just nothing in it between these guys. Look at the background now. Bacetta and Singleton right in the battle. Coming through to this section, which now is the new part of the trap. Got yes, meanwhile. How's a look in the inside of Tarasson? Almost contact again. Kind of reverse of what we saw with uh, Vainio having a look at Corius at Hockenheim. Look at down the outside. What a move by Luciano Pacetta. Gets one place, almost got two places. Is he going to get second position around the outside of Corius? I think he's maybe just about. Yes, he has. Fantastic move by Luciano Pacetta. Tremendous drive by the Englishman on home ground. Looking good for a podium. And. Uh, Corius, his team looking incredibly tense and nervous because this could be the championship for Corius if he gets the job done. First race of the weekend, Corius won it from Pachetta. Fino in third. The charge into Woodcut, down into Cop Cop's corner, the first very fast corner, very short run between the turn in and apex but look at this move by Bacetta just inspired he really thought through the move very cleverly positioned his car brilliantly Corius and maybe understandably knows that 
the real fight now with uh, Archer Pick, having had a frustrating time of it uh, in race one. And likely that uh, maybe Bocetta could challenge for second in the championship. Tanison no leads Bocetta, Corius, Richard Singleton, and Anav Aravenio, De Jong Pick, Nibieres, Hilkema, Vekstrom, and Stewart in 12th. Tremendous circuit has just been the uh, venue for so many great races over the years. We saw Nigel Mansell in attendance here, of course, took victory in the 1991 and 1992 British Grand Prix, plus going back into 1986 and 87, 86 at Brown Hatch and 87 here at Seals after that legendary move around the outside of Nelson Piquet into the Stowe corner, the old configuration of the circuit, much closer to its original format. It's been through so many changes, but this new format, drivers and teams seem to really like the layout that they've got at Silverstone here. And there's no doubt that uh, we will see some of these drivers move up through the ranks and potentially the, we could be watching some future Formula One drivers amongst our ranks here. European Championship with broadest drivers like uh, Massa and uh, like Robert Kubica amongst others moved up from uh, this level of Formula Renault racing up eventually into Formula One. But for the moment, Estonia is looking like it's going to have a new star. It looks like we're going to see victory. Oh, as they go into the last lap now, we're going to see victory maybe for Tarasson, the Spaniard. From the Englishman, Bacetta, Corius from Estonia. Another Englishman, Singleton, the Finn in, in uh, Fanio. Vanillo is uh, going to be fifth, we think. Venturini, the young the Dutchman, shall pick a Frenchman. And this is just highlighting the variety that we see in this championship. It's been a fantastic battle throughout the year. Pick and uh, Corius have been the real stars, but Bacetta right in there, consistently scoring well. Ryan and brothers again, just look, it's so stressed. And who can blame them, really? These young drivers have had experience of some of the greatest circuits in Europe. And it will stand them into such good stead. 5.14 Ks of Silverstone's legendary tarmac. They sweep through the section at the top part of the track now, having come through Club Corner down into Abbey, which is uh, now a very, very quick left-right section. And then breaking down into right hander at bridge. Fantastic circuit for these guys to uh, run on as they come down the back straight here into the left hander at the end, which is going to be almost at the end of this race now. Danason looks like he may be able to give his Epsilon Uscardi team a victory. Robert Costa, of course, winning the championship for this team in 2009, moving up into the World Series. Through Luffield, the final corner, then into Woodcut, a legendary right-hander that leads him onto the start, finish straight, and victory for Javier Danason. By 0.4 of a second from Luciano Bacetta, from Kevin Corius, Richard Singleton, Vainio Venturini. But the champion, Corina Brothers and Kevin Corius for 2010. So, back with Lord Coe, our, uh, our rapper man. He's focusing now on the... Uh, the Gantt Trophy we're going to be watching, and Jean Ragnotti is going to give this man a run around the circuit. This is a delight to meet you. I've seen your rallies on TV. I saw you win at Monte Carlo and other rallies. Really happy to meet you here. This is a... I'm an old man. And the car is an old car too, but it's a legendary car, says Lord Coe. And Jean Ragnetti says, historic collection team, check it out after each race. They uh, take it apart, put it back to again. Every event that we run, it's checked. 
parts aren't all that easy to get in these type of cars, so we have to uh, be really, really careful with it. This is for a lot of our viewers. You're a legend. I'm a bit scared, but uh, I have total faith. After all, this is Sean Ragnotti. And he says, as long as we're the only car on the circuit today, so at least we've got a chance of winning. <laughs> so for Ragnotti. Oh, well, no. It's uh, a 30-year love story. He says, it, my first official race was in 73 in an R12 Gordini. In 77, I became a works driver. And that's still the case today. It's far from being over now because I keep signing new contracts, which is great for, uh, for uh, a man like me. So let's watch uh, and see what Lord Coe makes of this legendary car, a legendary driver in action on the circuit here. driving mastery through to the style that made Jean Ragnotti uh, renowned to give me a fantastic present today bravo thanks uh, you made my dream Jean and I'll be uh, I'll dreaming of this for the rest of my life this is uh, my challenge is to work you into the lyrics of one of my next songs Something totally unique for me. It's unique. I mean, you're someone unique in the world. Sean says, I've always brought my teammates back alive. And here's another one. So now meets uh, John Pascal Dos, head of competition Renault Sport. And Lord uh, Coast says, what's this car? He says, this is uh, the most styling car, stylish car in a Renault range. Tubular chassis. I call it a silhouette because it doesn't look much like your standard mechanic. And, but it has the same as the yes, some aesthetic uh, areas, uh, but the rest of it is a racing car. It's a Nissan racing engine, a sequential gearbox, and it makes it a superb car for the drivers to enjoy. So Lord Go is going to enjoy seeing guys like Nicky Katzberg, Stefano Comini, Bas Scotthurst, Dimitri Angelbert here at Silverstone for race one. Renaud Derleur, Pierre Thierrier, Sebastian Duelli. In uh, Le Lompec Sport Car, Jean Philippe Madonia, Nicolo Nalio, David Dermont, Evert Vers, Fabien Tunier, Caroline Griffney, the lady racer from Belgium, Wim Balen, Stephen Giesen, and Raymond Coronel, Harry Collin, Jaron Scott Hurst, further down on the grid than we might have seen, Jean Charles Mignac, Navajo, Angelo Bacheria, and Rafael Unzorunzaga rounds out 22nd on the grid in the, the Spaniards car in the Blue Jamera team. But at the front, you can see Comini in a distinctive multicolored car. The Oregon team brings the car down into Cops Corner. And it's being challenged by Thierry. One of the Equipe Vacher cars comes around the outside. The uh, Vacher team running the uh, McGregor cars, which are the dark blue cars for Scott Hurst brothers. 
but also uh, a couple of other cars you saw the very distinctive red cars as well for Vin Bayland and uh, Ali Collin amongst others and this is a tremendous grid at Silverstone season so far has been about Katzbo and Thierry they've been the drivers that have really dominated the championship so far Kamini taking victory as well the drivers come into the corner at the end. Katzberg leads Kamini, Scott S, Angelbert, Dello, and Thierry. That is our top six. And this is Caroline Griffney. What a tremendous accident she's had here on the opening lap. She's trapped by her uh, radio lead, I think, is what's stopping her from getting away from the car. And uh, understandably, a bit dizzy. That car has just destroyed itself at the, on the first lap at uh, the Beckett's complex. She's okay, that's the most important thing, and you can see very graphically that it's a space frame chassis, all uh, lightweight bodywork on the car, a V6 Renault engine in the back, the same engine effectively as you see in the Formula Renault 3.5. 70 there is Dimitri Anjoubert, who is in uh, one of the Boots and Energy cars. The safety car is ready to go. Comini, though, and Thierry H still at the head of the pack. There's virtually nothing in it between those guys so far. And Katzberg took his first victory in Brno. Another victory in Manicor and uh, another one also in Hungaroring and Hockenheim. And we've also seen wins. Thierry A took his first victory in the second race at Manicor. Stefano Comini had uh, the first race at Brno and then also took victory and uh, the second round at Hockenheim. So we've seen a big mixture of drivers taking wins here. Other drivers like uh, Dimitri Angelbert, one at Spa Francorchamps. That was the first round of the championship for them at Spa. Then they went to Bruno Manicure, Angara Ring, Hockenheim, and then Silverstone. And so into the race here at Silverstone. It's looking very strong for Nicky Katzberg. Quite a long clear up, as you can imagine. There's nothing much really to uh, take away of the car. As you can see, it's just absolutely destroyed the, the car. That's reminded it's Katzberg leading from Kamini, Scott Hurst, Angerbert, Dello, and Madonia. And Baz and Jurin Scott Hurst, both in identical cars. There you can see the orange. Wings of uh, Scott Hurst, Carni Canalio, teammate Camini, 3A Duali. He's uh, competitive as ever. Oregon team, the Italian team. Looking on with interest to see whether Camini can challenge for victory. Guys from Navajo, Scott Hurst, Colin, and Miniac round out the uh, 19 cars that's still running. Now, this is on board with Caroline Griffney. Let's have a look at exactly what happened. See, charging up through the gears. The sequential gears, six-speed gearbox. You can see just about see on the graphic on the on the dash. As you see, uh, one of the boots and cars running wide. And yeah, Sanjay Bear possibly running wide there. Now contact from her right, flicks her sideways. The car digs in on the grass, and then we see bits of McGann V6 car destroying itself and shedding itself around all over the place. Most importantly, she's okay as the Boots and Energy team ready themselves for a stop. Mandatory stop for every race here, which gives the drivers and crews a chance to take on some fuel and also some changes, some tyre tank changes. The eight car coming through our shot there of Duali. In the background we hear the dulcet tones of David Addison, the circuit commentator, as Keeping everyone well and truly informed as to what's going on here at Silverstone. Let's watch to see who gets the best of the stops. Cars bring themselves to a standstill. You see that the uh, crew's getting very excited. And the rest of the Crews watching on as it was after the restart. Kamini took victory from Katzberg, Thierry, Derlo and Duelli. We'll be back after the break with more action on Motors. 
So, round two, or race two at Silverson, Katzberg on pole from Thierry A. Comini and Angel Bear. Nicola Nalio, good performance by the Italian there. Head of Buzz Scott Hurst going further down. David Dermont in ninth. Tunier, Harry Colon. So, rounding out the top ten. So, from the start, we're going to watch the TDS drivers. Katzberg and Thierry A. fighting their way down into turn one. Cops corner in the background. Angel Bear and Comini and Nalio. All side by side, sweeping through down towards the Beckett's complex. Let's hope there's no repeat of Car Caroline Griffney's dramatic exit from race one. Understandably, she's not racing here in two. Meanwhile, Comini and... Uh, oh, is, is that Anja Bear? Or uh, Duali going out wide. I think it was Anja Bear perhaps running very, very wide there. Couldn't quite see who that was. Meanwhile, the number eight car coming through. One of the uh, Oregon drivers. Oh, and off. Big off there for Duali there into the wall. Very frustrating for him. There's contact at one of the highest speed parts of the circuit at the end of the hangar straight. So they break into the right hand. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to see uh, uh, a replay. Is it Voss, maybe? Yes, it was here that Voss was the driver that was off there. Another of the uh, Fischer drivers taken out well and truly. And Bear was the driver that they made contact with there. Not really much he could do about that. Understandably very frustrating for him. So, as they sweep into the right-hander there, the battle continues throughout the pack. One of the other Fischer cars, the orange car and the red cars coming through there. Meanwhile, towards the front, it is still Thierry 8. And Katzberg fighting. There is Thierry 8 with Comini and Nalio in the vicinity of Ange Albert in the white car just ahead of Scott Hurst in the McGregor car just immediately behind one of the other share cars. And uh, both Baz and Jeroen Scott Hurst very, very competitive throughout the season. Has been slightly more successful than two. So Katzberg, Kamini, Nalio, Thierry, Angerberg, and Scott Hurst. That is our top six. Tunier in seventh ahead of Derla, Renaud Derla, coming back into the series at uh, Ockenheim, Duale, Diamant, Madonia. Further down the pack, Colin, Coronel, Navajo, Geisen, Vajuera, Miniac. Zoran Zaga out of the race by the looks of things. Spaniard in the uh, Team Shimira car, but it is the Oregon car just ahead of Thierry Ayers. Anshabet has a look at Scott as that position has been swapping. The uh, seven car of uh, Scott Hurst fighting hard. That's Buzz Scott Hurst, of course. We have uh, Anshabet in the Boots and Energy car. Katzberg comes in for his mandatory pit stop. The TDS driver on the verge of possibly clinching the championship. Having taken second place in the opening race of the weekend here at Silverstone. The victories at Hockenheim, one at Hockenheim, one at Hungary, one at Manicure, and one at Bruno. He's been so consistent. Once he made that breakthrough, the young man has really been the man to watch and see some of the drivers moving on. A couple of them raced at Le Mans this year. A couple of the drivers that have been racing in Renault 3.5. Angel Bear, I think, was one of them. And the McGregor sponsorship you'll see uh, proudly on Tom Coronel's car racing in the World Touring Car Championship. He's also been involved in NF1 as well. As so Madonia makes his stop. And the other TDS teams. It seems like TDS, Boots and Energy, McGregor and Oregon have all been pretty equally matched in terms of performance throughout the year. I said Kamini having a couple of victories, plus the one earlier in the weekend here at Silverstone. Katzberg looking so strong. Obviously yet to make his stop, hence the, the big gap. Bits of debris on the circuit, so much uh, racing goes on in a World Series by Renault weekend. A couple of races for all of the categories here, so at least eight races here. 
Plus, quite often, the local championships uh, or the championship of the country they're racing in, like British Formula Renault, Renault Clio Cup, will have each, also each taken a couple of races as well. So, uh, 12 races as a minimum, plus the demos from Ragnotti and from the F1 car and the, the stunt team on circuit and some of the historic F1 cars. Classic F1s uh, in action as well. Battle just rages on between the Duelli there. Still fighting amongst the pack. Meanwhile, it is Katzberg at the head of the pack, just edging away. Having had a, a neat and tidy stop, didn't see that, but it all went very well for the TDS driver. And this, I think, could be... Could have put him in a strong enough position. potentially take the championship. Meanwhile, this battle between Alio and the others continues. Alio Duali. Kamini in there. Fighting very, very hard. Almost falling over each other. Angel Baron Kamini. Oh, there. They're absolutely neck and neck. Thierry's in there. Shot to us. Look at them right over wide. Now look at who's going to come through this lot intact. Let's hope nobody ends up upside down like Paul. Caroline Griffney did. And Derlo, I think, has just about got himself ahead, yeah. Derlo, fantastic drive by the, the Frenchman who came back into the championship. Having uh, been racing elsewhere recently. A performance uh, that really is showing that had he done a full season, he maybe have been in a position to challenge for championship honours. This car's so equally matched. Katzberg leads Kamini, Nalio, Angel Bert, Diallo, and Scott Hurst. Where has Kamini gone in all of this crap? Because we can't see where, what's happened to him, I think. That is, uh, Kamini's up the road. That's uh, Nalio in the middle of that scrap there. Sure, last year's champion Michael Rossi, Pedro Petis, drivers like Jap van Lagen moving on as well. Previously, of course, it, instead of the, uh, the McGann V6, it was the Clio V6 that raced here, as you see. Arjel Bert and, and Durlo. Durlo around the outside of Naliona. Great move there to get that one done. Scott Hurst, I think, to the inside. Oh, Thalio, has he got it done? Oh, a bit of contact there. They just about somehow managed to work their way through. Thierry also in the, in the middle of that scrap as well. Thierry taking uh, victory at, at uh, the second race at Manicor and, and also the first race at Hungaro Ring. But Thierry and Kamini, other than Katzberg being the, uh, the most successful drivers this season, He's not giving up either, looks to the inside there. Virtually nothing in it once <laughs> again. Fantastic action here at Silverstone as the last lap. This really not troubled this man, has it at all? He's just driven away. Malio in the 24 car. Uh, heading that scrap behind them. Who's going to get the best of it? Looks like I think it's slightly started to ca calm down as very sideways. Nico, Nicola Nalio, the Italian driver, putting big pressure on Thierry, but I think Algebert's maybe got the best of it. Camini will have almost certainly come through, I think, in second. He's gone, but is it going to be Algebert? Yes, Algebert ahead of Derlo. And uh, then Bash got Hurst ahead of uh, Jean Philippe. I'm sorry, Pierre Thierry taking the position. So that's the situation. It is Katzberg who is uh, as good as our champion now, ahead of Thierry Kamini. It's very, very close still for that fight as Ragnotti hands out the trophies to a very, very happy Nicky Katzberg. So, we then go to the final race of the weekend. It's uh, Barcelona, Camini on pole, Katzberg, who can clinch the title in this race one. And uh, Ajabert stalled at the start there, a problem for him, whether it's a drive shaft problem or electronics problem, maybe difficult to say. Meanwhile, Camini, Dillo, Katzberg, 
Always all fighting into turn one at Barcelona. In the middle of the pack, the scrap continues. We saw Fabien Thune out in the six car just in the middle of our, our pack there. But for Dimitri Anjabert, frustration for the man who took victory in uh, Spa earlier in the year. Not to take a victory here in Catalonia or even be able to challenge Caminito, Derlo, Kasberg, Madonia, Nalio and Scott Hurst. That's our top six. Diamant, Duali, Thierry, Voss, Geisen and Tunier. That runs out our top 12. Bielan, Colin, Coronel, Miniac, Nahavo, and then Scott Terce, the other of the uh, Equipe Vichier by McGregor drivers, the very distinctive dark blue cars. And Odello putting pressure on Camini. Katzberg in close attendance, meanwhile. Dutchman, of course can get this done here if he takes victory he will have had uh, such a tremendous season regardless of what happens such an emphasis put on championship victories of course he's uh, on the inside good move there from uh, Junior in the six car getting himself up a position meanwhile the 24 car of uh, Niccolo Nalio fighting hard with Madonia. And Scott Hurst that's down the inside as well, gets the job done. Saw the gap that presented itself. Meanwhile, Katzberg is chasing Durlo down. Yeah, Thierry is the only driver that could uh, possibly clinch the championship, take it away from Katzberg. Katzberg, his teammate, has certainly been the, the star of the season this year. Interesting to see what the young Dutchman does. There's such a lot of talent coming from Holland at the moment. Never lock up there. Yeah, just, just managing to squeeze past. From Thierry. It's not looking good for Thierry at the moment, is it? It's, it looks like it's uh, going the way of Nicky Katzberg at the moment. Local driver Unzor and Zaga at the back. Enjoyed his racing this year. Tricky cars to drive. Almost have to drive in like a single seater. It's a space frame chassis with that V6 Nissan engine in the back, which is a Nissan Renault project, if you will. Six speed sequential gearbox and the Michelin slicks. A lot of aerodynamic benefit as well to the way that these cars work. So there's absolutely no doubt that these, uh, these guys are amongst the very best drivers in sports cars that uh, in one makes use. Is that move again by a few now on Theory 8? Very late in the brakes, bit of a lock-up, just about manages to hold the car in tight. Looking for Thierry A to maybe get a, a run back past again. 36 minutes remaining. This final lap of the race, this uh, final uh, round of the championship, rather. It is starting to look very difficult. He's going to have to try and do something pretty special in the remaining half of the race. It's going to be a difficult call for him, though. As you see, the 16 car of Hibbert Voss, we saw him fired off uh, quite uh, unceremoniously at Silverstone. He's now ahead of 3 uh, 8. Duelli just ahead of him. In seventh position, Diolo we see there now under increasing pressure from Nicky Katzberg. Gamini still at the head of the pack. Fight for second between Renaud Diolo and Nicky Katzberg. The Diolo brought in to help uh, Duali. Sebastian Duali has been helped uh, and uh, to give uh, him an a little bit of um, support, if you will. Much more experienced driver racing at much higher level as he comes in for his mandatory stop. Bootson, of course, uh, the Thierry Bootson, another man with a, a very successful history with Renault in the past, winning all three of his Grand Prix with Renault Power underneath him, two wins in 1989. One in Canada and one in the uh, final round of the championship, the uh, horrendous conditions in Australia, legendary race. And then also taking victory in Hungary the following year in the FW13 Williams. 
under massive pressure from drivers immediately behind by Scott Hurst in third position the number seven car has had a, a solid run this year he's had a couple of podiums in Bruno and Manny Kerr as we see Thierry a now taking his stop another podium of course in the second race at Silverstone so third positions for those guys there in the nine car Team Lompec Sport driver brings the car back out now. Was that Camini? Was that our race leader? I think it might have been Stefano Camini taking a very, very late stop here at uh, Catalunya. Just under 13 minutes plus one lap remaining of this race. It still could be between Katzberg, Camini, and Dirlo. They're the three drivers. There's the 25 car of Stefano Camini, the Swiss driver. In a very distinctive pink, yellow, and green Oregon car. Meanwhile, Katzberg, TDS driver, continues on his way. Lights up the rear tyres as he leaves the pit. Still, be more conscious of the uh, speed limit as they come out. Look at the difference between them. It's going to be very little in it as they get onto the brakes into turn one. Who's going to get the edge? Kamini or Katzberg? Kamini goes in. Just about keeps the car neat and tidy through there. Very difficult to balance the car when you've come straight out of the pits and you've kind of broken your rhythm as a racing driver. Whereas, of course, Katzberg still very much on the, on the, a charge. Although it's not essential for him to win the race to clinch the championship. As any good racing driver, he wants to win every race. He has a possibility of doing so, and he looks very, very strong. come through as one of the drivers Kamini, Katzberg, Dirlo, Scott Hurst, Voss and Duali that's our top six we've got Voss having a good run at the end of the season here as is Sebastian Duali interesting that the uh, majority of the drivers seem to be uh, either French or Dutch a few Italians Swiss a couple of Belgian drivers um, shame we don't see any British drivers competing this haven't really seen a few years ago, we saw uh, Sam Hicknick and uh, Rick Pierce, I think it was, fight, fighting in the Clio V6 trophy. Of course, this Renault in, in Europe have been involved since 1981, since we saw that uh, magnificent car early in the programme with uh, Jean Ragnotti, the 105 uh, Turbo, Maxi Turbo, as it was called. Of course, that is the car, very similar to the one that uh, Ragnotti won the Monte Carlo Rally in 81 in but also that formed the basis for a one-make race car championship to see uh, this battle between Katzberg and Kaminian. Katzberg has got himself ahead. He's looking good, very good for the championship now. Kaminian is going to be frustrated by that, the Swiss driver. I think Kaminian and Katzberg, probably on sheer pace, have been the two strongest drivers throughout the year. You can see just how much the TDS car moves around on the brakes there. Katzberg really asking a lot of the Michelins and the car itself. 10 minutes remaining, plus one lap of this uh, opening race here. Very, very, very special moment for Katzberg. If he can clinch this, if he can get it done, a bit of bodywork on the circuit. So hopefully that doesn't cause any problems at this late stage with now just under two minutes remaining. It would mean that they would red flag the race rather than put out a safety car. As you see the uh, 17 car of uh, Harry Colon. Putting a bit of pressure on uh, the back of Madonia there. Theory 8 in the scrap there as well. Meanwhile, just ahead. See the rest of the pack as uh, Fabien Tunier having had a good run as well and nobody has been able to do anything about uh, the charging Katzberg at the very front of the pack there is Tunier just coming through the scrap through throughout that section that uphill section towards the end of the lap here in Barcelona after coming out of that very tricky left hand at the bottom of the hill location and back uphill through into this final section which was modified a couple of years ago to uh, slow the F1 cars down here of course uh, Formula 1 having been a part of 
the Catalonia circuit since to 1991. We moved from Mejerez, where they used to have the Grand Prix before that. That's no concern of these guys at the moment. We might see some of them move towards a single-seater career. Some of them have experience in single-seaters, but uh, realistically, sports car route, maybe into GT racing, and ultimately maybe racing in things like at Le Mans. Could be where they go. Scott Hurst, a neat and tidy move down the inside there. That's that move done. I wonder if maybe Kamini has some sort of a problem. Seems to be losing time, big time. Losing a lot of time at this late stage of the race. Wonder if maybe they've misjudged the fuel that they put in. Plus Scott Hurst in the McGregor. Really keep by for sure. Gets the job done very neatly and tidily down the inside. Classic overtaking move here in Barcelona, of course. And apart from that move to get himself into the lead, Katzberg seems to have made the best of it. This looks like it's going to be a championship winning race for Nicky Katzberg. He's going to bring the car through this final section of the lap and for him and for the TDS team. It's going to mean an awful lot. I know they've had to work very, very hard to keep the, the, uh, the uh, things equal between the drivers as you see it off there. Is that Voss? I think that might have been Hubert Voss who was running very well at the uh, head of the championship. French team TDS. Third in the Euro Championship in 05. Vice champions last year. Won the Gentleman's Cup last year as well. But for 2010, looks like it could be the main prize for them as Daphne Kamini having a major problem dropping back through the order as we see there the 23 car of Navajo his teammate in the Oregon racing car it's uh, been Navajo Nicola Nalio who served have that massive scrap at Silverstone and Kamini being the three drivers Kamini very much the uh, the star of the team with TDS though it's been very difficult because they've had Pierre Thurier and Nicky Katzberg as championship challenges but it has been this young man who not only took, will have taken uh, one, two, three, four, five, six victories now up to race one at Catalonia, but most importantly will have taken the championship. Been on the podium also at Spa and at Manicure and also Hockenheim and Silverstone. So it's only had uh, really earlier in the year the uh, a zero in the first round at Bruneau. It's the only time we've not seen him score significantly well. First race at Hungara Ring. Saw him uh, take a fifth position. Other than that, it's been podiums all the way for Katzberg. And he's going to join the illustrious list of winners of the championship. Here in Megane. And another fantastic opportunity for drivers to use the, st the stepping stone that Renault provide. Great for spectators, but great for drivers as well. Mike Vachert, another Dutchman winning it last year. Michael Rossi before that. And uh, Van Lagen, another Dutchman, also successful. And before that, we saw the V6 cars. And before that, the Renault Spiders. Drivers like Andrea Belikia, Tommy Rustad and Frank Lagos taking victory in that. But it's going to be all about this man. It is Nicky Katzberg who takes his sixth victory of the season. Tremendous performance by Katzberg. Gets the job done. Wins the championship in the process. Head of Renault Dello. Baz Scott Hurst coming in third in the keep by the sure car. Stefano Camini taking fourth after dropping back quite late in the race. And he's going to be frustrated with that. Is that, is that part of the screen? Maybe one of the side screens, I think, falling out of Kasperg's. Perhaps he uh, perhaps he punched it out so that he can wave out the window to the crowd because he knows, nope, it's still there. He knows he's done the job. <coughs> and that's what it means to Kasperg. Tremendous performance, gets it done, punches the air with delight. And it will be very interesting to see what this young man does with his future in motorsport. But at uh, the other end of the scale of... Uh, Drivers trying to make their way in motorsport. We have the 
Formula 4, the 1.6 Academy drivers, identical cars, in fact, so identical that, as you can see, the, even the livery is exactly the same. And, uh, and for these young drivers, they go through the Academy, they get an opportunity to not just learn their racecraft, but also to uh, try and uh, develop their education, their physical fitness, and all the cars are identical, all run in-house by the same organization it's uh, been uh, what was uh, known as La Filie, now known as the, the F4 Euro Cup. As I said, there's uh, 1.6 uh, engine cars creating some action throughout the year. And so far, the season's really been about a fight between various different drivers, between Belgian driver Stoffel van Dorn and Nor Frenchman Norman Nato, Mathieu Geminet and Paul Loup Chatin here at Silverstone in... Uh, the end of the season get a chance to see that Van Dorn here at Silverstone even if he doesn't win he's going to be able to take the championship by getting some solid results Poulip Chatin is uh, the man who took two pole positions and takes both victories and ahead of Mantovani Nato Van Dorn is crowned the champion, a sole Belgian flag amongst a sea of French drivers. And that has been our review of the World Series by Renault. Thanks for joining us on Motors. We hope to see you in 2011. I'm Simon Hill and the rest of the...